In this video, we want to discuss cancellation properties. So we start with the following theorem that says that if a plus b is equal to a plus c in a ring, then b equals c. So this is telling us precisely that we can cancel the a from both sides of this equation to get an equality with b and c. And note that this could also have been stated b plus a equals c plus a, and we would get the same result that b equals c. The whole idea is that we can cancel a. So let's see how we prove this. Let's see, we want to start off by adding negative a to both sides. So by adding negative a to both sides. And then we want to use some associativity properties. And we get the following set of inequalities. So we're going to start off with a plus b is equaling to a plus c. And that was given. I'll give myself a little bit of space here. So these are the two things that were given. But what do we know? We know that we can add a negative a to both sides because negative a plus a has a solution. Uh, negative a, excuse me, whenever we have an element a, it has an additive inverse. It's the best way to phrase what I was trying to get at there. So how do we use this? We can now group this as negative a plus a, so we're using associativity of addition. Similarly, on the right-hand side, we can group here. And then what do we get? We get 0 plus b equals 0 plus c. So b equals c. So that was really nice and straightforward way of showing that we have cancellation with addition. So the next question we want to ask is, when do we have cancellation with multiplication? Namely, if we have a product, when can we cancel one factor of the product on each side of an equation? And that happens precisely when the ring is an integral domain. And so let's work on this proof. It is also quite straightforward. But worth an explanation. So the first thing we want to do is suppose that AB equals AC. Well, then we can subtract on both sides and we have that AB minus AC is equal to zero. And we can factor out an A to get that A times B minus C is equal to zero. Now we know that this is an integral domain. So what does that tell us? It tells us that a has to equal zero or b minus c has to equal zero. Those are our two options. So because our theorem states in its assumption that a is not equal to zero, then we must have that b minus c is equal to zero. So that finally gives us that b equals c as desired. So why is it important to note that r is an integral domain when we have this? It kind of seems like, oh, okay, that's a, that's a good property we want to have. But let's look at an example of what happens when r is not an integral domain. So I'm going to use here the integers modulo 4. And consider the following equation. 2 times 3 equals 2 times 1. And so is this true? Of course it is. When we do 2 times 3, we get 6. That's congruent to 2 mod 4. And then 2 times 1 is equal to 2, which is congruent to 2 mod 4. But note, 3 does not equal 1. So we can't cancel 2 from both sides of this equation. And the reason why is because 2 is a 0 divisor. So this property that AB equals AC implies that B equals C only holds in a ring without 0 divisors, namely an integral domain.